All right, folks. Welcome to the preseason webinar for IUS uh, Track and Field. We are here. We are at spring. We are excited to get back outside after the winter season. Um, so we will keep this to our one hour timeline. Again, as usual on Zoom, uh, if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand, unmute, ask questions, um, type it into the chat if you want to, whichever way you feel more comfortable, we will answer your questions. Um, but we will work through this in a timely fashion and try to get you guys in and out and get the info that you need. So first thing I want to talk about some extra stuff. Um, again, IUS, the Interscholastic Unified Sports, which we provide to your students, is part of a three-part program called Unified Champion Schools, uh, which is UCS. The other two components are um, youth leadership and whole school engagement. Uh, youth leadership can be as simple as having team captains on your teams. Uh, whole school engagement can be something like announcing when you have uh, district tournament results over the PA speaker in the morning, just like you would scores for football, basketball, whatever it may be. Um, if you are interested in finding out more about youth leadership opportunities um, and whole school engagement, please reach out to Melissa Kelly. I will send a follow-up email with uh, information on UCS and how to get in contact with Melissa Kelly. No need to write anything down, so you'll be good to go. The other thing that I wanted to mention is the MOVE Challenge, uh, which is part of our fitness initiative. Uh, we have more health and fitness opportunities that we are looking to provide uh, going into the end of 2022 school year, startup of 2022 fall, and into 2023. Uh, we have a move challenge that will be happening in May. You can see the flyer for it on the screen. You will also get that in the follow-up email, so no need to write anything down or find anything. Um, could be a really good and fun opportunity for your students to get involved, uh, to get some physical fitness in, track it along the way, um, and it has a little bit of a competition to it, so it's a, a fun thing to get involved with. Agenda for the uh, evening. If you've been to one of these before, it's Pretty much business as usual. Uh, we'll talk about season timeline, remind you of things that you should have on your checklist as a district rep, uh, your coaches' trainings, what the outlook for the season is for the state tournament at the end of the season, um, remind you about all the forms that you guys are used to doing, um, and just some rules reminders. Not a ton of rules reminders, um, but we'll talk about more when we get there. First off, if you hadn't seen her on the screen before, I wanted to introduce Riley Palmer. Uh, she is our IUS intern for the spring. Um, she is a senior at Salisbury University and she will be working with us through the spring. Um, so you will see emails from her. You will um, see her at district tournaments. You'll see her at the state tournament. You'll see her all over the place. Um, so again, if you have any questions, uh, you know, you can always work through Riley or myself or Jason. Uh, but I wanted to introduce Riley. Um, additionally, she's going to start looking and working on some transition programming, some opportunities for when your students graduate. Um, so she'll be reaching out and kind of sending stuff, trying to lay a foundation for that as well. Also, Jason Matter, who is our unified track and field uh, sports chair, his number's on the screen there. Um, his email's on the screen there. You'll see a bunch of emails like you've seen from Katie in the fall, uh, winter season and fall season for uh, all sorts of deadlines and paperwork and all that sorts of fun stuff. Um, as always, if you have any questions or concerns or need help with anything, Jason, Riley, and I are here. Um, I will probably say that a million more times before this webinar is over, but I want to stress that we're here to support you guys. Um, and that's my contact information. Um, if you're sick of dealing with me, feel free to go to Jason Riley. I get it. I understand you won't hurt my feelings. Um, plenty of other people at work also feel that way. So don't worry. So we're going to hit some admin stuff. Um, not anything too, too crazy, but Jason, do you want to talk about our season timeline here? Yep. That sounds good. Um, again, those of you that have done it before the season timeline, you know how important it is to go back and forth and meeting deadlines and hitting deadlines. Um, this kind of gives you an outline of what's expected of you as we enter into the season. Friday, March 1st, we have the um, MPSSAA spring practices start off. Thursday, March 21st, we have the first eligibility play date for spring sports. And then Thursday, March 21st, we also have the due date for applications for participation, team rosters, declaration, and those 
famous CDW forms uh, and non-student athlete class A requirements. Um, April 8th, um, the LSS registration manager competes, completes the GMS processing, postseason registration. Um, so those are our first slide of like important dates to keep your eyes out for. Um, put on your Google calendars, uh, make sure they're knowledgeable of them. And um, any due date specifically that March 21st one um, is being hit. Um, when we can't hit deadlines, it pushes everything back and really kind of clogs up everything on the admin side. And that's something obviously we don't want to impact any student athletes um, moving forward into the season or coaches. Um, and we can continue to have an ebb and flow um, to the beginning of the season. Uh, one thing I'll add to that too, that I, I forgot to mention um, with Jason, when we talked earlier is uh, in the winter, we kind of saw a little bit of a backup because of COVID stuff, which we totally get going into the spring. When it, we hit uh, due dates, if you're having an issue, obviously communicate with us you know, email, call, text, whatever it may be. But if you're hit that, that March 21st deadline and say you have, you know, 75% of your roster, that's, that's ready to go, ready to turn in, you know, paperwork ready to go, but I'm waiting on 25%. We'd rather have that 75% on March 21st and then work the next week or so to, to bring in the last 25%. Um, same thing with that, the April 8th deadline for getting stuff into GMS you know, we want to get stuff in there as much as possible. We'd rather you put in 75% and say, Hey, my other 25%, we got some COVID stuff going on. I need a little wiggle room. That's totally cool. We'll work with you on that. Um, it's just, it, it's really tough when we have, you know, zero or 10 or, or 25% in there. Um, cause it really throws off our groove to start setting things up for the state tournament. Um, additionally, as you guys may have seen in emails recently, um, when it comes to getting stuff into GMS and paperwork and stuff, that's really big for our grant reporting too. Um, same thing with coaches trainings and stuff like that, having that information available, you know, by these due dates really sets us up to be able to report that accurately, which then does a better job of us securing funding to help you guys support your programs and grow all of our programs as well. So again, there's, there's basic SOMD things that hitting deadlines helps, um, but it also helps on a, a grander scheme of funding as well. All right, so uh, track and field specific dates uh, to put on your calendars. May 3rd, we have the county championships, um, including any rain delays must be completed by this date. It's your drop dead date for county championships. Um, last day to also adjust your roster counts for the purpose of divisioning. At States, uh, May 17th, you have state invitational for rosters of 20 student athletes or fewer. Uh, May 18th is the state invitation for rosters 21 plus student athletes. Um, May 19th is the makeup inclement weather date. Um, and then please note roster sizes for states will be determined by the team roster declaration. So make sure that is as accurate as possible. And again, making sure that those county championships do get completed. We're here to support you to make sure that happens. Um, so communicating will be key as we approach that date of May 3rd. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and just a note, kind of thinking out loud with you guys online, uh, this is something actually I, I just thought about looking at those dates for the 17th and 18th and the size of the rosters that are, are dependent on participation on those dates. Um, if, if we see a participation rate with track and field, like we have for tennis and bocce and strength and conditioning, most rosters and the amount of teams participating has been somewhere in that 60 to 70% range. Um, so we may not go hard and fast on the size of rosters being on certain dates, but we'll continue to communicate that with you as we go through. Uh, just again, anticipate that you will be one or both days. Um, we'll, we'll continue to work with that. We'll continue to talk that out with you. Um, but again, we won't really have a great idea of what that looks like and how many days and how much time on each day we need until March 21st when those rosters come in. Jason, do you want to mention the, uh, the All right. season? Yep. or the pre-competition? Yep. Yes, Thursday, May 5th, 630 is the track and field state invitational pre-competition webinar. Um, you can register for that. The link is within the PowerPoint. I know Zach will send this out to you, so you'll be able to click the link, register. 
Uh, Tuesday, May 17th and Wednesday, the 18th track and field state invitationals will be held at PG Sports Learning Complex. So, Terry, I know you're happy about that. It's right in your backyard. So, uh, May 17th and 18th. Um, and I'll, I'll be down there. Probably Jason will be down there. Uh, maybe yes. Riley will be down there on the, the 16th setting up. Uh, 16th is our setup date. Um, so we'll have people boots on the ground at the facility on the 16th. If something comes up that you need us on uh, the 16th coaches training stuff. Um, again, mentioned this a little bit in an email prior uh, when it came to supporting you guys for your coaches trainings and for um, you know, us being able to report coaches trainings as part of our grant funding. Um, so again, we always kind of offer and, and talk to you guys about three different opportunities when it comes to how you can hold your coaches trainings. The first one is you can do a webinar like we're doing right now. Um, you can do a live webinar where, you know, you get on with your coaches, talk through some things, you know, talk about rules, questions about rules, talk about your, your county championships, when they're going to hold them so on and so forth. You can do it that way. Perfectly fine. Um, the other is kind of the in-person version of that, you know, get together, talk about what's going to happen in your district, uh, talk about the due dates that they need to hit, so on and so forth. The third option is just building off of the second option, which just includes a sports specific training piece to it, where, you know, myself or somebody from our track and field team comes in and we talk to your coaches about, you know, coaching track and field or, the rules or whatever you may need. Um, Barb has actually done a great job. She already has her set up for the 21st. Um, I will be out there. We'll be talking about some track and field stuff um, when it comes to running meets, participating in meets and coaching her athletes and the, the county's athletes uh, in better ways. So again, you can see on the board, uh, we already got some things filled in in our, our tic-tac-toe or Hollywood squares here. Um, that might be a little bit of a, an old reference for Riley. Unfortunately, I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in on what Hollywood squares is if you don't know Riley. Um, but so again, get me your preseason meeting dates, your coaches training dates. Um, and if you have your district tournament date sooner rather than later, um, that would be fantastic. Uh, we want to get that on the calendar so we know that we can come out to support you as well. Um, so the sooner you can get that, the better, um, again, I will follow up tomorrow with an email uh, for this. Um, fantastic. That's great, Terry. I'll, I'll grab that date and time specifically from you um, in, in an email tomorrow when I do a follow-up. Um, I'll, I'll be there to support you as well. Um, the one other thing is we started using that this form this year. Um, I will say it helps me tremendously uh, to be able to access this form. Um, Essentially, it's the, the who, what, where, when, why of your district tournament. Um, it gives me some extra details to know how I can support you better. Um, it gives me, you know, more specific locations. It gives me start times. It gives me all sorts of things to, to really help you. And if you request different resources, whether that be equipment, management personnel, volunteers, whatever it may be, um, I have all the details that I can share that and make those things a reality for you. So please um, again, this will come out with the email tomorrow for your district tournaments. Please fill this out and send it in. Um, it really helps me keep track of things, um, and helps us share info. Um, sometimes our CEO, Jim Schmutz likes to come out to different things so he can just look at this and know the info and join us as well. Uh, some additional coaches training, just things that you might want to access and, and check as resources. Um, SOI, which is Special Olympics International, um, has coaches guides for every sport that Special Olympics offers. Um, the track and field coaches guide, I think, is roughly 9,000 pages long at this point. But that's because it covers everything under the sun. It has nice little 30 to 40 second training videos for your coaches. Um, it's just a really good resource. So check that out when you get the chance. Um, additionally in our Tuesday night bocce meeting, we talked about that we are going to record a little bit of a rules video because there were some rule, uh, questions and concerns that came out of indoor bocce and we want to address them for outdoor bocce. Um, so we also wanted to put on the table, the possibility that if you would like a track and field video recorded on some rules or how to do handoffs, or one thing we'll talk about later is, you know, how do the exchange zones work? How do I even set up exchange zones? Um, that's something that we're totally willing to do, but we really need your feedback on what you need to make it a good vid video. 
we can assume and make guesses, uh, but that's not going to suit your needs and fit what you guys need to really accomplish and get the information that you want to get to your coaches in a video format. Um, I will send you the link for the guide. Additionally, when I send the slide deck for the PowerPoint, Terry, um, it'll be in here as well that you can click right on it and go to it. Um, additionally, it is going to be on our um, track and field IUS website as well. That will be up and live tomorrow. I've been a little bit slow on that, so I apologize. Um, but all these resources will be on there as well. Um, so you're going to get a, a, a super mega email tomorrow, I promise. Um, and it's probably an email that's worth flagging for the whole season. Um, but again, I will, in part of the email that you will get tomorrow, I will put in a request in there. If you want things recorded in video format for training your coaches or having as a resource for your coaches, let me know. And we will make that happen for you as well. Um, last kind of question for GMS training is um, I know some districts prepare their their district championship and meets in GMS. Um, if anyone needs assistance with learning GMS to do that, um, we'll, we'll get you trained, Terry, don't worry. Um, we'll get you set up and trained uh, to do it in GMS. With that said, the last kind of bullet point there you don't have to run your track meets in GMS. It's great, it's helpful. Um, we definitely like to run all of our events in there. Doesn't mean that's what works for you and you don't have to do it. But if you'd like to learn how to do it or you want a refresher on it, please let me know um, and we'll get you set up with a training. Um, I'll come to you and sit down and we can do it. Uh, it could take up to two to three hours, just to let you know. It's it's a little bit of an extensive training to make sure you have all the tools that you need to do it. Um, again, reminder for rosters, um, it's not so much a track and field thing that we run into. It's more a bocce tennis kind of thing. But if for some reason you decide to split teams um, and have different groups for different reasons, just make sure you're naming them so we can get them into GMS the best way. Again, school name, number. Uh, don't do colors, don't do favorite animals, don't do favorite shapes. Um, again, GMS doesn't like anything besides numbers. Um, so it would appreciate school name hyphen numbers. Um, again, just training requirements and state uh, invitational and tournament qualifications. Essentially what this slide says is we want you to be training athletes for eight weeks. Get out there, get on the track do your field events, get enough experience that your athletes are prepared for going to uh, a district meet and state tournaments. Um, and then the last bullet point essentially says, we want you to participate at two uh, regular season competitions and regular season competitions. One, everybody's having a district meet. So you got one in there. Second one's just a, a dual meet or, you know, two schools, three schools, four schools coming together, whatever it may be. Uh, we want you to get two of those in. Again, these are all in preparation to get your athletes ready that when they go to the state tournament, they are ready for that experience. And they're, you know, used to being around multiple teams. They're used to being in staging. They're used to um, going from their track event to their field event. They're used to that flow of competition. So it's not overwhelming for them. Um, and it's not overwhelming for you. And it's not overwhelming for us. Um, so again, eight weeks of training is what we're shooting for. Two regular competitions before the state tournament is what we're shooting for. Um, again, this is a reminder of resources. Um, when I send this all out to you, this section where it says visit Unified Track and Field Site will have the link to the Unified Track and Field Site. Um, on that, you will have access to the uh, official coach resources guide and rules. Um, when we're, our host manual is ready, our host manual will be up there. It'll have links to uh, Again, we use NFHS track and field rules for IUS Unified, but it'll have all the other rule sets in case you're interested in reading rule books. Maybe that's what you do in your spare time. Uh, I'm not going to judge you on how you spend your spare time if you read rule books, but um, coaches training tools, everything. Uh, the If you need the, the logo to put on your uniforms, it'll be on there. All sorts of stuff will be on there. So again, we will get you that link for the website when it's live tomorrow. Um, so we have just a little bit of a, a checklist. A lot of you are probably well into this checklist at this point. 
Um, and some of you, based on your, your districts and how they operate, may not have started some of these things uh, based on how you know, you're supposed to be putting in requests, so on and so forth. Um, but get in touch with your, your supervisors of athletics, athletics directors, athletics coordinators, whomever it may be. Um, make sure all your schools have coaches. I know to start up the year in tennis, we had some struggles with making sure that we had uh, coaches for each school for tennis. Um, you know, really start getting your, your schedule together, work out with your athletics director, what's your date for your meet and what time it's going to happen. Um, one of the big things that's been a challenge for all the schools, from what I understand, is busing. Uh, figure out what days you need to get on the calendar for busing and who needs to work out busing um, and get all those things in line, right? Um, as part of that, if you have coaching vacancies, make sure they're advertised so we can get coaches in there. Um, and then if you happen to have any new coaches that are joining us, please send me and Jason the contact info. Uh, we want to update our contact list that lives on the Google Drive. Um, all of you will have access to that too via the mega email that you will be getting. Um, so if you need to contact anyone else, if you want to do a, a cross-district meet, go ahead and do it. Um, and then again, um, make sure you have your coach's briefing plan. Sounds like, yeah, I know Barb's got it. Sounds like Terry's is next week. We got a couple others next week. Sounds like a lot of you are very much already on that. Um, again, you know, make sure you have reminders set to your coaches to be at that training. Um, I think they're pretty hard to miss because they need to be there for most districts to be certified as a coach. Um, if we do an in-person training, I may bring some physical resources. It doesn't hurt for you to bring physical resources. Um, I don't know if, uh, athletic directors have done this, but NFHS does have a 2022 track and field rule set that is available for purchase on their website. Like the rule sets usually are. Unfortunately, the digital PDF version is not ready yet, but the physical copy is. Um, I'll be picking up a copy of that myself. Um, so if that's something that you're looking to get as well, um, you know, it's, it's up and ready to go. And then make sure your LSS managers are ready uh, for um, GMS input and stuff too. Again, we really want to rock and roll when it comes to getting ready to put stuff in for GMS and get hitting those deadlines. Um, if they need help or they need a refresher on how to do data entry, if you need help with that because you tend to help with that, let me know. We'll set up a training. We'll do a Zoom thing. I'll come out again. I'm more than happy to sit down and help you guys with whatever you need to be prepared for your season. Um, recruitment. If you would like recruitment flyers, they still exist. Um, send me an email. Follow up to the, the mega email tomorrow. Um, there may be a stack in the office already. Uh, so if somebody hops right on it and reaches out, I may be able to deliver you a recruitment flyer stack ASAP. Um, if not, we will have them printed and shipped to you. Um, and again, usual flyer, we have that section at the bottom. You can fill in your own information. Um, and we have the two options of the, the poster size and then the uh, legal paper size. And then we also, if you want a regular 11 by eight and a half, we can make that happen as well. Um, that's totally up to you. But if you want recruitment flyers, please reach out to me. Additionally, with recruitment, I put this slide in for the bocce webinar as well. Um, coming through this year, it's been a very different year. Um, <laughs> I think all school years going forward may be very different. Um, I think we're probably looking at a new normal of what things will look like. Um, and I, I think that was a really good, a really good bug that was put into my head by Michelle Hill, actually, and Frederick. Um, so again, if there are other things that you need to recruit, and I know there are some parents that are still iffy about letting their kids participate in athletics with things going on. If there are other means of resources to recruit that you need and or want, email me, reach out, let me know. Um, if you have a good idea that might work for you, there might be four, five, six, 12 other counties that it may work for as well. Um, so don't be afraid to throw out ideas. Um, you know, they're, they're obviously at times are budget restraints for, for you and I. Um, but we will do our best to make it happen, um, especially if it's an idea that you think will get more students involved. Uniforms, good old uniforms. Um, standard uniform that we, we ask for you to have at district tournaments and for state tournaments. Um, Got to have that Special Olympics unified pill-shaped logo either on the chest, on the sleeve, or on the back. Um, 
I will say I have worked with our uh, uniform company that does our, our staff clothing and the, the shirts and jackets and stuff we give to you guys. Um, they have made like one inch by three inch patches of that, that pill shaped logo that we can iron onto other regular uniforms that may already exist in your school systems. Um, had this pop up with a team for tennis. They had uniforms. It didn't have the, the logo on it. So they were trying to figure out how to get the logo on it. We have patches. I don't have a ton in the office. I may have a hundred or 200 of them. So that's another first come first serve. Um, but if you are interested in ordering patches for your uh, teams as well, as a option of putting that logo on uniforms, reach out to me. I can connect you with our distributor and they are ready to go. Um, the, the logos can be found in the Google file. Um, better than that, again, when the uh, website is live tomorrow, go to the website. They're all on the website, and it's a lot easier to access than Google, um, especially if Jason or I forget to give you access on something, then you got to request access, and we got to give you access, and it's, you don't know how long that may take to turn around. Um, again, this is just some final reminders. Um, if you have equipment needs or uniform needs, um, of course, first stop is talk to your athletic director or your uh, athletic supervisor for the whole district. Um, see what they can do, see what they can do to support you. If there's an issue or a need, please reach out to me. Um, again, we can't always guarantee that we can help, you know, uniform a whole team or anything, but we will do our best to support you and find ways to do it. Um, we also have access to a lot of different grant funding options that we could potentially put out there saying that we need new uniforms. Um, you know, uh, luckily with Tanisha Montgomery in Baltimore City, she worked out a deal with Under Armour um, and they gave her a whole bunch of stuff. So maybe Tanisha might be able to hook us up with Under Armour, who knows? Um, but again, whenever you need something, reach out and ask. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask. We're here to support you uh, for anything that you may need. Comar regulations, everyone's favorite. Um, we get to Comar and everybody takes a, a 45 second nap when I go through this slide. Um, again, you guys know the Comar regulations. Essentially it talks about who can participate on teams based on participation on other teams in that school year. You can't participate on track and field if you are participating in track and field as the traditional varsity sport. You can, you can't just, you essentially can't do unified track and field and you know uh, standard track and field at your school in the same season um, or the same year, technically. Um, but again, you guys are, are, are pretty good with that. For the most part, we don't see that pop up too much. If you have questions or concerns about that, let me know um, and we can talk through that as well. Just a reminder of what the district map looks like. Um, hasn't really changed on anything besides us adding Baltimore County uh, for indoor bocce this past season. Um, it was great to have them. That's a, another 22 schools that have joined us. Um, so I'm really excited for them to come back for indoor bocce um, next year. And we're going to have hopefully 20 more teams coming back and, and playing with us. Um, forms and registration. This is the other fun part of the webinar that everybody gets really excited about. Um, this big red slide in summary, again, is if you don't have everything turned in, especially for this spring season, we, we're going to have to have a, a cutoff line for things, right? We, we need to have all the rosters with all the people on it. Adding people at the last minute really hurts in preparation for things. Not having in certain forms that you need really hurt the preparation for things. Um, and it's not just a preparation for us. It's a preparation for you as well. Um, and I hope that your coaches, you know, really uh, respect the process and respect you guys too to, you know, meet those deadlines that you set for the information that you need to do your job well. Um, and again, if there's issues, communicate with us, let us know, talk to us early, talk to us often, um, and we'll get you guys worked out. Um, again, you know, as long as we can work together and have that open stream of communication, we can make things happen. Um, but again, make sure everyone's listed on the team declaration roster that goes out on the 21st. That means all student athletes, that means all your coaches, that means all your assistant coaches, that means all paraprofessionals, that means all team managers, everybody that's going to be on that team that year, make sure they're on that roster. Um, CDW file, uh, again, we need those 
those are only needed again and applications and participations are only needed again for your students that have not participated and turned that in up to this point this year. So Terry, if you have bocce players that are coming back for track and field, they're good to go. You know, Barb, if you have people coming back from tennis or bocce, they're good to go as long they, as they turned in everything. Um, again, if you need help with us double checking that, um, we can let you know. Additionally, I can also teach you how to run your own report in GMS to check that yourself. Um, so I'm more than happy to teach you that as well. Um, so it's, it's a little bit easier for you to check instead of waiting on me to check for you. Application of participation. You guys have seen this form a million times this year, I'm sure. Um, again, the only reminder that I'm really going to give you here is that in those boxes in the middle, athletes with an intellectual disability check off something in the gray. Athletes that are either intellectually disabled or um, have a different type of disability, an IEP of some sort, will check something off in the white box. Unified partners, traditional unified partners, for the most part, don't check anything off in there. Um, again, pretty standard form. You guys know the deal. Um, I need to change that on the slide down there. It's March 21st, not the 12th. CDW, you guys know the deal. We need the CDW. It's our COVID form. Um, you know, if anybody that's new for the spring season, a parent, an assistant coach, or whomever may ask, like, hey, why do we got to do another one of these? Unfortunately, every organization has one, and coming to the state tournament is a Special Olympics event, so we need you to um, fill that out and turn that in. Um, I will also remind you guys that with the CDW, that is a one and done for anybody on file. They turn that CDW in once, they're good for the rest of their life, essentially. Um, unless Special Olympics International changes something, which we don't foresee, that's the game plan, which is really nice. So, uh, again, team roster declaration. This is your main team roster. You're turning in on the 21st. The biggest thing that I will continue to stress with this is, no, first page is just letting us know, this top section where the first arrow points to, have everybody and anybody that is a, a coach, assistant coach, paraprofessional, team manager, make sure they're all in there because then that helps us know who is part of your team and who we can go to if you need assistance. Um, it also lets us know when it comes to getting ready for the competition, who should be registered in GMS for your team so that when you show up it to registration in the morning at the state tournament, there's no surprises, there's no credentials missing. All that stuff is ready to go because it was on this form and we can double check it there. The other note is there is a column on the right-hand side of all these that's really helpful for your LSS managers or whomever puts in your stuff to GMS. Um, essentially, it's just a, did they get into GMS? Yay or nay. That's, it, it, it's written a little bit more complicated than that, but it helps you keep track of who you've gotten in there for sure. Um, additionally, for anyone that is a head coach, assistant coach, paraprofessional, um, and student manager, they need to do the Class A clearance, which is our main clearance to be a coach. Um, the main items of that are the uh, SOMD volunteer application, which is the background check, or eh, not or, and the protective behaviors training. Um, they also need to complete the CDW form. Those are the three things that all your coaches and assistant coaches and everybody like that needs. Application to volunteer, protective behaviors training, CDW form. Um, there are two ways to go about this for those folks. A, you can download all the forms. You can handwrite them if you want. Um, you can do the protective behaviors training and download the certificate. And you can mail it to coaches at somd.org to Dottie Rush, and she will process it that way which then it gets stuck in an inbox pile, or you can go and log into Volunteer Hub and do it right on there. And in Volunteer Hub, once you do it on there, it's done, it's in there, you're good. Um, you know, occasionally I will go in there and double check, um, you know, and try to expedite, you know, pulling information from there to GMS. Um, and it's just way quicker for you, to be honest. Just do Volunteer Hub. Tell your coaches, do Volunteer Hub. Um, I will send a link as well uh, in the email tomorrow. So you can just share that link to go to Volunteer Hub and register. Um, so it should be nice and easy. These next handful of slides essentially walk you through taking the protective behaviors, 
what to do for it, and signing up for Volunteer Hub. We're not going through all these slides. Um, you will get this slide deck. If you want to share these slides with your coaches to help them walk through these training pieces, that's totally fine. Again, it goes step by step, shows you essentially how to get in, watch the video, take the quiz, you know, turn it in. I, I finished it, great. Hit the done button, print your certificate so you have it for your records, and it's good to go. Same thing with Volunteer Hub. Um, there's a way to access it on our page that you can just create an account. Create an account just like any other website you go to, so on and so forth. You know, check all the things, put in your information, background check. You're good to go. Um, one reminder when it comes to student managers and the Class A clearance process, if they're a student manager and they are 17 or younger, so they're, they're a minor essentially, they will do a minor reference form which is essentially two or three references instead of the background check. Again, if they're not 18, we can't background check them. Um, so that's the biggest thing in the class A uh, procedure to remember is if you have a student manager, it's a little bit different for them. Additionally, for LSS managers, we have a, a document kind of like a guide that can help um, with G GMS registration. Um, if you would like that, I can dig it out. It's a few years old. Um, I don't think there's any major issues or changes with it, um, but that's usually something that I present to people uh, during their LSS GMS training, um, just to have just as a reference. Um, additionally, if you run into an issue on GMS and have a question, you all have my phone number. Just give me a phone call, be like, Zach, I'm in GMS. It's doing this weird thing. What do I have to do? Half the time, it's a one-click thing that I've made the same mistake on a million times, and I can walk you through it in 10 seconds, too. Um, again, this is talking about the non-student athlete uh, registration. Um, again, just make sure that you get all of your people into your roster. Make sure you get them all into GMS. And then when it comes to showing up at the tournament, you guys are all going to be set. Everybody's going to have their credentials. Everybody's going to be accounted for for lunch, and we'll be good to go. Same thing, talking about non-student athletes. This is just for um, your coaches and team managers and assistant coaches. Same thing. Um, again, a little blurb about LSS manager responsibilities. Um, again, they are a key focal point to making everything happen. Um, if they don't get stuff into GMS, and then when I go to start prepping stuff for the event in GMS, that means I have to go in and add all your people and create people that haven't been created yet because they're new for the season. So if you guys with your LSS managers can get ahead of that and have that all in GMS, when I move things over from the training area that you put things in a GMS to the competition, everything moves a lot faster. I can division things a lot faster. I can get you divisions faster. I can run reports faster for you. Um, and everything's a lot more accurate, too, because you know your people better than I do. Uh, this is essentially another shout out page to that. Uh, the shout out to the, the website that's going to be up and running. Um, you can click on this link when it's up and running. Um, and again, it will be live when you get the mega email tomorrow. Uh, so here's some of the, the main track and field stuff. Um, not a whole lot that we're going to go and dive into here. Um, nothing has really changed as far as I have seen when it comes to the track and field rules. Um, but roster proportionality. Um, for track and field, it's not as, as definitive as bocce tends to be. Again, you know, two athletes, two unified partners. You know, you can have a team of six. You can have a team of eight. Bocce is pretty cut and dry. Um, when it comes to track and field, Again, the idea is that uh, the proportionality of students with and without disabilities, no more than 70% of the roster can be composed of one or the other. Um, teams that don't meet the minimum standard of 12 student athletes, combine them with another team. Um, that's what we've, we've recommended. Um, we've seen combined teams this year because of COVID situations and uh, smaller participation sizes. It's worked out really well. It's actually been really nice. And I think some of the schools have, have built some really nice camaraderie together, um, working together when they're usually used to competing to, against one another. Um, but again, this is just a reminder on the, the roster setup, essentially. Um, there are cases where there's a 70% rule where, you know, crazy year, 
we, we have a ton of unified partners. We can't get athletes. Our, our school just doesn't have athletes. Our parents won't let, you know, athletes with intellectual disabilities participate. Or it's the other way around. You have a ton of athletes that are ready to participate, can't get unified partners for some reason. If that's the case, please reach out to me. This slide essentially says, if that's the case, and you ask for a, uh, a waiver essentially on that 70% rule, we're just going to run it by the rest of the district reps. Um, we want it to be fair and equitable for everybody. Um, and all the district reps understand a lot of you guys are in the same boat. Um, but again, we want to make sure with the rest of the district reps, which we essentially call our unified track and field sports advisory committee, that that's okay that we grant that waiver to a district that the other districts aren't taking advantage of. That's all that says essentially. So just a reminder of how the points and scoring works for track and field, uh, at least at the state invitational. The essentially first place gets awarded five points for each event. Um, second place gets three, third place gets one point. Um, so again, you know, uh, 25 meter run, you know, gets, you know, first, second, third place, you come in third place, you get one point for that, that event. Um, and again, we, we compile all your, your points together figure out who the team winners are, award accordingly. Um, again, uh, the way we do uh, the divisions, there is a weighting to what the number of scoring opportunities are in a given division for teams. Um, so a very easy way to do it because strength and conditioning is a little bit easier to explain. Essentially, if there's a team with 14 scoring opportunities and a team with 10 scoring opportunities, one point for the scoring opportunity of the team of 10 is 1.4 as compared to that team of 14. That is one point for one point. Um, if you are really interested in finding out how the point system works and the crazy Excel spreadsheet that we use to calculate them, I'm more than happy to sit down and show you that because that is pure chaos in my mind. Um, I joke all the time that, you know, they don't pay me to do math and then they put a, an Excel spreadsheet like that in front of my face. So um, if you want to learn about it, I will teach you about it. No problem. Meet management. This slide essentially says when you guys run your, your county championships, we want them to essentially just be mini state tournaments. You know, try to run them as close to the state tournament as you can. Um, you know, ask for what assistance you need. We'll support you however we can. We really want you to take the lead and the charge on running them and developing a team to help you run them. Um, but when you need help, ask for help. We're more than happy to help. The exchange zone. This is probably, it's, it's not even really a new thing. It's probably just the newest thing that people get hung up on. Um, for relays, essentially every, every relay race has an exchange zone now. Um, depending on the length of the relay race depends on how long it is. Um, so anything that's a, a four by one or four by two essentially gets a exchange zone that's 30 meters long. Anything that is bigger than a four by two, four by four, four by eight, four by a million gets a uh, 20 meter exchange zone. Um, exchange zones also depend on the type of start that we do. Um, you know, essentially the layout for it will be a little bit different for, for water, waterfall starts or staggered starts on the turn. Um, the one thing that if we do a coach's training and I come out and talk about um you know, coaching athletes and stuff. The one thing is the exchanges at the first exchange point, second exchange point, third exchange point can get a little confusing when you're talking about a race like the four by four, where they're running that whole lap around the track. And so essentially we will start with a staggered start from my recollection of how I've done it in the past. But as they get going, they don't have to stay in their lane. And then when they have to come back to it, hand off, it can get messy. Um, so I can help you guys develop a coaching technique to, to kind of sort that out with your athletes if that's something you want to do. Um, but we will use exchange zones. Um, they have been really beneficial when we ran our track and field uh, state tournament for community programming last summer at Summer Games. They worked out really well. Um, again, we just got to make sure everyone's on the same page for them. All right. I will tell you, this is our, our last main slide here. Um, essentially what this main slide just says is that Jason will reach out once a week, kind of just check in with how it's going. Um, and essentially uh, I'll leave it up to you and Jason to figure out what works best for you. Some people are good with just texting. Some people want to do a call. Some people want to do a Zoom session. Some people want to meet face-to-face. -face. 
whatever you and Jason work out that you want to do, uh, just make sure you're communicating. Uh, even if Jason reaches out and you don't need anything, please respond back and just say, hey, Jason, right now we're good. I appreciate you reaching out just so we know that you're good um, and everything's okay. Um, and again, don't be afraid to ask for things. If you need help with stuff, if you want us to come out and help you at, do trainings and stuff like that, we're more than happy to do that kind of stuff. Um, just again, keep communicating with us and we will take care of you guys as best we can. With that said, we are at the end. Um, I, I tried to plow through that as quick as I can. Um, again, there, there are things that may come out throughout the season that we'll communicate to you. Like we talked about with uh, roster sizes and on what days they may participate, we may just do you know who's participating on what day based on on school or whatever we come to when we see those rosters on the 21st, but we'll keep you in the loop on that. Um, you'll be getting that mega email from me after this. Um, and then any questions that you have, feel free to reach out. Again, you all have my phone number. You all have my email. Um, you all have Jason's phone number, his email, and you have Riley's contact too. Um, so if you can't get a hold of someone, um, I, I don't know what happened to all three of us. We must have fallen off the face of the earth at that point. Can, can you? Um... Yeah. Uh, Jason's number. I know you showed yes. it in the beginning, but I, um, I will scroll back up to that and reshare. Jason's number on his slide is current slide. And I got to share. Two years into this, I'm almost good at Zoom. <laughs> Oh, it, it showed the last slide again. Okay. Well, we won't hop back in and out. We'll just scroll to it. There it is. Wait. Uh -oh. um, while, while Terry's writing down phone numbers, any, any questions that anybody has, any concerns going into the season, anything that you want to talk through before we, we close it out tonight and you know move along into our next phase of opening up the season? Silence is sometimes a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Either everyone's good or everyone's confused. Never know which end of the spectrum we're on here. I'm getting his email too, so don't change it. Yeah, uh, you're good, Terry. Um, all right. Um, again, if you have a question that pops up, um, text me, email me, call me, whatever it may be. Um, I think I'm, I'm pretty good at responding to things um, unless I'm at a, another tournament, in meetings, whatever it may be. Um, but I try to get back to you guys as quick as I can because I know your questions um, could be for later that day for, for practices as well. Um, with that said, I am going to close this out. Um, I'm going to thank you guys for being on here. I'm going to thank you for everything you've done up to this point this season. I'm going to thank you for everything I know that's going to come down the pipelines and that you're going to do for the spring season. And again, I can't thank you guys all enough. Without you guys as district reps holding things down in all your districts, which are all different, that all have different needs that we totally recognize and want to support, without you guys, this don't happen. Um, and again, if for some reason I'm not at your coaches training and I don't get a chance to thank your coaches, please thank your coaches for, for us too. Without them, none of this happens and your athletes don't get the experience that we, we want to provide for them. Um, so thank you guys again so much. Thank you for coming on tonight. If you have any questions, reach out. We're here to support you. You'll get that nice mega email tomorrow. Um, and in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your Thursday night and hopefully have a nice weekend if, 